Hidden Gabe Newell Shrines, the lost Call of Duty game, the secret link between Mario and Skyrim. Here are 12 facts about games you won't believe. Mass Effect animator Jonathan Cooper recently revealed that the conversation system in BioWare's stellar RPG was inspired by a very unlikely source, Ricky Gervais's 2005 comedy show Extras. Before you say anything, no, it wasn't a joke. The over-the-shoulder camera and awkward close conversations are there to see in every Mass Effect game. It's one of those strange gaming facts that you'll probably forget about, and when a friend tells you it in years to come, you'll question whether or not it's true. With that in mind, we've decided to round up 12 surprising, weird gaming facts. In this video, we'll be looking at the lost Call of Duty game, hidden developer messages, and how an actual butt delayed the PC release of Halo 2. Here are 12 weird and wonderful facts about your favourite games. First up, Batman games. When fighting as the Bat, you may have noticed how rhythmic the fighting is. It sometimes feels like Batman is actually doing a dance, albeit one with, uh, you know, shattered kneecaps and suplexes. And there's a good reason for it. Arkham Asylum was originally envisioned as a rhythm action game. It went through many iterations during development, including a 2D version, and you can still see echoes of this in the way the combat works. Take away all the punches and knifings, and you can see the bones of a game similar in construction to Guitar Hero or Dance Revolution. And here's a bonus fact. One person was assigned to work solely on Batman's cape for an entire two years. Think on that whenever you decide your job is boring. Next up, Gandhi. Or, more accurately, the hyper-aggressive version of Gandhi from the original Civilization. Talk to anyone about Civ and they'll angrily recall how pacifist Mahatma Gandhi was surprisingly quick to start dropping nukes on his opponents. It just doesn't make sense. On the face of it, he has an aggression of one, the lowest score in the game. But there's a problem with Civ. Every time a country adopts democracy, their aggression is automatically reduced by two. And since the code wouldn't allow Gandhi to go to minus one, his aggression automatically rolls over to a whopping 255, making him by far the most aggressive leader in the game. So technically speaking, Gandhi is actually a pacifist in the game. It just doesn't last very long. And although it's technically a bug, his propensity for nuclear annihilation was recreated in Civ 5 as an homage to the original. What's the link between Skyrim and Super Mario? Apart from the fact that both games let you eat mushrooms and fight dragons. The answer? Charles Martinet. The veteran voice actor is best known for his roles as Mario, Luigi, Waluigi, Wario and uh, Toadsworth. But he's also the voice behind the dragon Parthenax in Skyrim. It's something of a departure from what we expect from the endlessly chipper Martinet, but it's a great demonstration of his range. Who are you? What brings you to my Strunmach, my mountain? And if you're expecting an It's a me, Parthenax! There's almost certainly a mod for that. And sticking with the Elder Scrolls, our next entry is about the largest map in gaming. And there's a clear winner here. It's an accolade that belongs to the second title in the series, Daggerfall. It sounds hard to believe, but Daggerfall's map takes up over 62,000 square miles. That's over 4,000 times bigger than the map in Skyrim. For reference, that's almost the same size as Latvia in real life. Bear that in mind the next time you feel like complaining about how long it's taking you to walk between Whiterun and Windhelm. And next we have Halo. Master Chief isn't exactly the most vocal character in gaming, Cortana is there to do most of the talking for him, but despite this, his voice actor has bags of experience. The Halo protagonist is voiced by a radio DJ called Steve Downs, who's been presenting since the late 1970s. He worked as a disc jockey for various LA rock stations, and in the early 90s, Hearst did a live call-in show called Rockline. Just think, your dad could have called in and requested his favourite tune from Master Chief himself. And that's not the only Halo fact we got. The Windows Vista PC port of Halo 2 was delayed for quite a bizarre reason. One of the developers decided that it would be funny to secretly include a picture of him mooning in the map editor of the game. You can Google it for yourself if you really want to. The problem was, this counted as mild nudity, meaning the game's ESRB rating was no longer correct. Microsoft had to apply stickers to the boxes amending the rating and remove it from future releases, all leading to delays. So if you have a copy of Halo 2 Vista with that sticker, the good news is you have a collector's item with a butt in it. 
Staying with all things intergalactic, our next entry relates to a simple, elegant secret in the original Dead Space. If you take the first letters from every mission in the game, it spells out a rather huge plot spoiler. So look away now if you don't want to know. That's right, Nicole is dead. We're sure you'd probably have worked that out by now anyway, but it's a smart little Easter egg, hidden right in plain sight. We'll forgive you for not spotting it, Isaac. Then we've got Fallout 3. This is a game full of smart references and hidden touches, but our favourite concerns the Fat Man, a portable nuke launcher which suggests nobody in the capital wasteland has learnt any lessons about the dangers of nuclear weaponry. The Fat Man is modelled on a real weapon from the 1950s called the Davy Crockett, or to use its full name, the M388 Davy Crockett Tactical Nuclear Recallless Rifle. But that's not all. The ding you hear when you actually fire the weapon is in fact the lunch bell from the Bethesda Softworks canteen. Dinner's ready, mutants. And here's an additional extra fact for fans of the original Fallout. Begin the game with fewer than four intelligence points and you'll only be able to communicate in simple grunts. On the subject of apocalyptic wastelands, here's a quick fact about Rage, which also involves heavy weaponry. Stand still for five minutes with the weapon equipped and a screen will pop out that plays Doom on the rocket launcher. And in an example of real life sort of reflecting art, the number of things that can actually play Doom is quite simply staggering. Clever programmers have managed to get the 90s shooter working on everything from an Apple Watch to an ATM to a plate edge beveling machine. And if you really want to get meta, it turns out even Doom can run Doom. GZ Doom is an open source port that includes support for arcade machines capable of playing other games, including Doom. It's kind of a uh, Doomception. Our next fact involves Lara Croft, or as she was almost called, Laura Cruz. Miss Croft wasn't originally designed as a relic hunting British aristocrat. Tomb Raider began life with a male hero, but designers soon decided that it was just too much like Indiana Jones. Instead, the protagonist became a South American woman named Laura Cruz. The dev team decided they wanted a name more familiar to UK audiences, so they picked the name Croft from a phone book. Thus, a legend was born, by accident. Another game that went through significant changes prior to release was Assassin's Creed. And in fact, it has heritage in an entirely different game, a sequel to Prince of Persia. Prince of Persia Assassin was the working title of a spin-off developed by Ubisoft Montreal back in 2003. It was a co-op game featuring a female assassin working as a bodyguard for the titular prince. Ubisoft eventually rejected the idea, but many of the team moved over to work on the original Assassin's Creed. There's even a trailer showing off some concept footage for the game. And yes, it looks loads like Assassin's Creed. It's hard to believe there might be a Call of Duty game you didn't know about, let alone one set in ancient Rome. But Call of Duty Roman Wars was very nearly a thing. Now, this game doesn't exist, which is why you're looking at footage of Rise, Son of Rome, but you get the idea. In 2008, Activision began courting pitches for a new instalment in the series. One such prototype came from a studio called Vicarious Visions, who pitched a COD game following Julius Caesar's 10th Legion. The game never happened, obviously, but there's a nice article on it over at Games Radar. Let us know in the comments if you'd have played a COD game featuring Legionnaires, Elephants and Working Catapults. I certainly would have. And finally, we've got something that no home should be without. A secret shrine to Gabe Newell, of course. If you enter a console command in the unforeseen consequences level, a portal to the fabled Gaben room will open before you. It's essentially a black box wallpapered with Gabe Newell's face. And who wouldn't want that? So there you go, 12 amazing gaming facts with which you can amaze, amuse and bemuse your friends. And before we go, we'll leave you with this bonus Mass Effect fact. The iconic sound the Reapers make is in fact the sound of a bear resistant trash can being opened. Of course it is. Yep, the greatest threat to sentient life in the galaxy is the sound of a garbage can. Let us know your amazing game facts in the comments below, hit like if you learned anything new, and subscribe to Logitech G for more weekly features.